Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel, my name is LazyJet and today I'm going to kick off with a brand new series. Just let you guys know that I have moved out and I've got a brand new flat and I've got a brand new Hornby layout I showed you guys on my second channel and in the tour video. And I just realised that now that my layout is much bigger, I can actually start making, for the first time ever, some Hornby races. And because my new layout is just one big loop around my bedroom, I see it as a racetrack. And now that I'm bringing back my Hornby series, I thought... Why not have, for the first time ever, a Hornby race on this channel? Now, I have to be honest, I don't have much locos, but I will do my best to make sure that these races will probably be good. And we'll probably, like, have a leaderboard of which one is the fastest, and by the end of this series, we'll probably have, like, the top winner. So to start us off, we're going to have the Backman Tornado, and my personal favourite, the Hornby Flying Scotsman in BR Green. So, let's get both of these engines, one at a time, out of their boxes, then place them on the track, see which one looks better, and which one has the most detail, and to see which one is the fastest on my brand new Hornby racetrack. Okay, so the first one we're going to get out of the box first is the Backman A1 Tornado. Now, I have done an unboxing of this locomotive before, so I'm not really going to... I go through all like, the detail of how well the box is. I'm just gonna get just get it out of the box and see how well it looks so far because there has been a while since I have um, ran these locos, so they are like pretty old now. Let me just slide this out of the box. Now I've got a little bit of history with uh, this actual model because uh, all the models I normally buy are brand new, but this wasn't actually brand new when I bought it. I actually found this on eBay at a very good price. I think I paid £109 for this engine and everything was in tip-top shape. I mean, th there was like like one or two damaged parts, but they were just an easy fix. I mean, I did read the description saying that there was a little bit of like damage here and there, but uh, I managed to fix them, and apart from that, it's a great runner. Um, but I have uh, fitted uh, TTS sound uh, inside this engine, so uh, it actually is a DCC fitted engine, and it has, uh, and I've added, you know, it comes with sound obviously, and but I had to put the sound in the tender because there wasn't really enough room. I mean, normally uh, the, the sound, the speaker, sorry, uh, does go in the tender, but some uh, engines have sound inside like the boiler, but if you can like find a speaker small enough to fit in there, then you're lucky. Anyway, let's get this out of its packaging. I have to be very careful because I don't want to, like last time I tried to review something this amazing. Uh, I dropped it, which was, I think, the Duchess of Sutherland. I actually remember dropping the box. But, uh, here we go. Let's, uh, oh, wow, it does feel, um, it does feel very delicate in my hands. So here we have my Backman Tornado. As I said, it has been customised. Um, and I'll try and get this on close-up as well. Um, let me see if I try and focus on the front of the engine, because I actually have fitted uh, a headboard uh, on Tornado, and that looks stunning, doesn't it? I'm so glad I actually found I actually found the headboard on eBay as well by a different person, not the same person who sold me this, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I think I, I think the headboard just like completes the look and the detail of this thing. It just looks so good. And if I just, I mean, yeah, this thing is slightly dusty. I, I have to be, admit that there is a little bit of dust on this because I, I haven't run this in a while, so it's just been on left on my shelf, just gathering dust. So. Now it will be an honour. It's more of a like an honour to run this rather than just to uh, have fun with it. It's, it. it's it's very rare that I actually ran well run tornado on my layouts, but um, it's it's so nice to have an A1 as good as this. And as you can see, there's I mean I should like put some like tape around the wires so they don't get like damaged or anything. But the, as I said, this is this is a customised. Uh, Backman uh, A1 Tornado. I mean, I have made a lot of changes to this. I mean, oh, wow, look how dusty the tender is. You can just see the top of the tender of how just how dusty it is. And I mean, is there any like cab detail? Oh yeah, there is. I forgot to tell you, there's actually cab detail in this, which is actually pretty cool. Um, God, I'm sorry if it keeps going out of focus. But this lens is just not behaving today. Um, I think it's something to do with the lighting as well. But there we go. That is Tornado. Uh, in its, uh, I wouldn't say mint condition, I'd say it's in its standard condition. I mean, it, it does need a bit of a clean up. So we'll move that to one side. Right, for the next engine, which is my favourite steam engine in the world, is Flying Scotsman 
in BR Green. Now, I have to say, a lot of people do prefer Flying Scotsman in the LNER Green, but this, you guys might hate me for saying this, but I actually think Fine Scotsman looks better of what she looks like today. So I think this green actually suits Scotsman better, especially with the smoke deflectors and number 60103. But most people are more familiar with Scotsman being number 4472 in the Apple Green LNER livery. But let's get this thing out of its box and see what it looks like. Um, God, it has been a while since I've seen this. I actually don't, like, I actually like, forgot of how it actually looks like. So there's the tender. Oh wow, look at that. And that's just, and it's still in this packaging, but it still looks very nice. Let's, very gently, I want to be very careful with this, because as I said, this is probably my most um, favorite model I actually own as well, not just the engine. So let's just slide this out. And I have to say that I also got this engine from eBay as well. I actually, I was actually very lucky enough to actually find uh, this uh, Flying Scotsman in this livery and Boy, did I get a good deal. Uh, I think I paid £110 for this. I think that come, I think that's like plus delivery as well. So uh, I think I just got quite a good deal on this. And this was in mint condition as well. So I'm just very scared to just touch it and get it out of this box. Let's just move the packaging slightly. And there it is. I'm just speechless right now. Ooh, the wheels are all tangled up. Come on, Scotsman, behave yourself today. Um, wow, look at the detail on that. That's just, that's amazing. And I don't think there's like much dust on it. I mean, it's got like a little bit of dust here and there, but that's like, that's like easy dust where you can just like get in and just brush it off. But that looks fantastic. I'll quickly show you guys a close up of the front as well, because I've actually had added uh, a nameplate. Uh, not nameplate, headboard, sorry, uh, headboard, not nameplate, and headlamps, I was going to say headlamps, and instead of, uh, I said um, nameplate, by mistake, I'm sorry, but I've added uh, some headlamps uh, on the front, and I have actually added, I'll see if I can get some close-up, I have actually added a Flying Scotsman uh, headboard uh, to the uh, model, so god, that looks so fantastic, I'm sorry if you guys can't see this very well, I'm not very good at holding a model steady, um, and plus, you know, uh, this is actually a, like a real good close-up shot, so I'm actually not very good at holding things steady, but that looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, let's get a good look on the side, so you can actually see the rods and the nameplate. The nameplate is by the wheel. I do apologise that I got confused with the headboard. I'm not very, um, not very bright. I am a bit, a bit of a dum dum, but it has got cab detail as well. I don't know if you guys can actually see. Oh, you can. Yeah, you can see that all right, can't you? Um, oh, no, that's gone out of focus again. I'm sorry guys, um, as I said, this lens is uh, not the easiest lens to work with. But there we go, you can actually see a bit of cab detail there. And uh, the, the tender has got a little bit of damage on the side, but that was like that when I actually um, bought it. So I think the tender was already damaged during like the process of delivery or something. But I do love uh, Scotsman's tender, especially with the British Railway on the side. I mean, I love that. It's so fantastic. And I love the Corridor tenders. I just have a thing that, I don't know why, I just have like this weird feeling that corridor tenders are just like really special. And you get like a top of the coal. As there is a little bit of dust um, in the tender, but you know, it's it's just, it's easy. I could just like clean that out with a bit of cotton bud or something, but that looks absolutely beautiful. Right, so now let's get both of these incredible engines on the track and see which one do you guys th think looks the best. Now before I start the race, you guys have been saying that having my Hornby layout on the carpet is a bad idea. I say, no you're probably right, it is a, probably a bad idea because um, a lot of people have been giving me tips saying that having a Hornby layout on the carpet could cause like fluff or hair getting caught up in the motor and then causing the whole engine to, well locomotive, to stop working altogether. And I'm just saying I've got to be very cautious here because uh, normally people have their Hornby layouts on a bit of wood or something but... Because I don't have any, any of that, I'm going to have to risk it and, put, and have it on my carpet. But, you know, I'm always optimistic, so hopefully this all shall work. And I have to be honest, OK, the inner track has a much better, a bigger advantage because uh, the outer track has to go for longer. And it's got this, like, shortcut bit where the inner track goes, well, has got less further to travel than the outer track. So Tornado is actually going to be traveling more distance than the Flying Scotsman. So the Flying Scotsman might have a better advantage here. Um, 
or tornado might catch her up. I, I don't know. I don't know which. I don't know what's going to happen. So that's why I'm going to be doing these very first ever Hornby races. I'm a little bit nervous. Don't know. I, I really don't know which one's going to be better, or which one's going to be faster. But let's find out. Okay, let the race begin in three, two, one, go. Well, my friends, by the looks of the result, I think Tornado might be slower because not only Flying Scotsman has the inner track and has the advantage, but even on the straights, she is just overpowering Tornado by miles. See who comes on the straight? See how fast Scotsman is. Just no way Tornado can catch up. Scotsman has the power and the speed. So those are the results, my friends. The Hornby Flying Scotsman is obviously faster than the Backman Tornado. But to be honest, I'm not surprised. I mean, we have proven time and time again that the Hornby Locos are way more faster than the Backman Locos. The thing is, when it comes to power and speed, Hornby have got this in the bag. But when it comes down to super awesome detail, Backman do an amazing job with their Loco. So it's not all just Hornby this and Hornby that, but I mean, Backman have some fantastic engines in their pockets. But which one is it that you guys prefer? Do you prefer the Hornby Flying Scotsman or the Backman Tornado? Which one of these two would you prefer? Now, in order to vote to say which one you guys prefer the one the most, put number one in the comment section below for Flying Scotsman and put number two if you want to vote for Tornado. So make sure you put those numbers in the comment section below to say which one you guys prefer. Number one for Flying Scotsman or number two for Tornado. Well, my friends, I'm sorry to say, but that is all I have for you today on this video. Make sure you click that subscribe button and turn the bell notification on as well so you stay notified to the channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and Twitch and my second YouTube channel. All the links are in the description below. And make sure you leave a comment as well of what you want to see next time for a Hornby series. If you want me to do reviews or you want me to do uh, some another races or just any other running sessions just let, that you have in mind, just let me know and I'll try and see if I can try and do them. But thank you so much, my friends, for watching this video. Stay awesome, stay safe, and remember, it's all about the game. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>